today it is to be back in the presence of Yahuwah and Yahushua HaMashiach, our Heavenly Father and personal Messiah and Savior. Uh, today's message is going to be entitled Israel's Unbelief, the Church Fighting the Church. And for some time now, I've noticed how the Hebrew Israelites have been fighting the Christians. The Christians have been fighting the Hebrew Israelites. Many of our Hebrew Israelite brothers have been fighting our Hebrew Israelite sisters. Hebrew Israelite camps are against other Hebrew Israelite camps. Uh, we have skin color versus skin color, tribe versus tribe, nation versus nation. And we also have the Israelites versus the Gentiles. Now, these are all of the schemes and the plots and the plans and the strategies that the enemy is using to further divide and cause dissension, discord, and cause confusion within the body of Yahushua. Because the enemy knows that if he continues to keep us fighting in the flesh, then we will never see his schemes in the spirit. And so now the goal now is to get us on one accord in the spirit so that we could effectively fight these spiritual evil demonic forces that we're going to continue to be up against until Yahushua returns. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. Yah had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. All peoples on earth will be blessed through Abraham. Why? Because Abraham's faith will be credited to him as righteousness. So now if you had the same faith that Abraham had, then you would be blessed. And so now if all the nations would have their faith, then their faith would be credited to them as their righteousness. This is the reason why Yah had told Abraham that all nations would be blessed through him. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 9, verses 30 through 33. What then shall we say? That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith. But the people of Israel who pursued the law as the way of righteousness have not attained their goal. Why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if it were by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written. See, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. You have to understand that the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness, they have obtained it. Although the Gentiles did not pursue righteousness. Why have they obtained it? They have obtained it because their righteousness was by their faith, not by their works. They understood that it was only by their faith that righteousness would be imparted on the inside of them. But the people of Israel who pursued the law as the way of righteousness have not attained their goal. We have not attained our goal. Why? Because we think just by keeping the law, which we cannot keep the whole law, we think that that is going to make y'all look at us as we are more righteous than we actually are. And so this is the reason why we have stumbled. We have stumbled because the stumbling stone happens to be Yahushua HaMashiach because no matter how much we try to keep the law, no matter how much we try to be looked at as righteous through keeping the law, the stumbling stone will always be Yahushua HaMashiach because he is the only one who was able to keep the law and fulfill the promises and fulfill the obligations of the law. Do you understand? We want to be looked at as righteous by keeping laws when it is really by your faith because our faith will bring us to a point to where now we can do what we could not do under the law by our works. All right. All right. Now, as it is written, see, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. See, now, if we believe in what Yahushua HaMashiach has done, then we will not be put to shame. But for those who think that they can continue to exude their righteousness by the works of the law, by their own holiness, by their own righteousness and works, Yah will continue to be a stumble, a stumble stumbling block and a stumbling stone that makes people fall. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8 verses 13 through 14. Yah Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. 
You did you hear that? Yah Almighty is the one you ought to regard as holy. Not the bishop, not an apostle, not a prophet, not an evangelist, pastor, teacher, not a rabbi, not, 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 not any of these, these church leaders, all right? Not any of these religious leaders. Yah Almighty is the one you ought to regard as holy. He is the one you ought to fear. He is the one you ought to dread. He will be a holy place for both Israel and Judah. He will be a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. He has been a trap. He has been a trap and a snare. He has been a rock that makes people fall. Why? Because people think that they can do their own work and they can do their own. They can, they can, they can obtain righteousness through their own works as opposed to obtaining righteousness through their believing and through their faith. That is the only way you're going to receive righteousness. But now we are still trying to hit the Gentiles upside the head with the word because we feel like we have come into the knowledge and truth now about certain things, you know, about, about, our lost culture and our lost identity, not keeping in mind that it was our ancestors' disobedience that caused the curses to be inherited by us. And so now we need to understand that the same grace that was extended toward us need to be extended toward the Gentiles because we need to be a light for them. Acts, let's go to Acts chapter 15, verses 18 through 19. Known unto Yah are all his works from the beginning of the world. Therefore, it is my judgment that we do not trouble those who are turning to Yah from among the Gentiles. Why are we troubling these people? We are troubling these people because we want to take them back to what Esau did and how Esau has caused all of this destruction and Esau's wickedness and his unrepentant mindset and his pagan mindset. And I'm saying, wait a minute now, we have Gentiles who are willing to believe. We have Gentiles who are willing to receive the knowledge and truth, but it seems like many of our Hebrew Israelite brothers and some of our sisters want to continue to beat the Gentiles upside the head with the word and not teach them, not edify them. And this is the reason why Yahusha has become the stumbling stone because it is not just by our works. It is not just by edifying with all of this head knowledge. We need to have love with this thing. We need to have him. We need to have righteousness. But righteousness is not going to come by us just keeping the law because that means that Yahusha HaMashiach would have kept the law for nothing. That would have meant that he would have fulfilled the obligation of the law for nothing and we can do it and so Yahushua HaMashiach was useless in his efforts in trying to uh, bring salvation to the ends of the earth and we already know that that there is false doctrine if we believe that Yahushua HaMashiach is the only way that we can receive salvation do you understand because you know it is through him that we receive justification justification that means now he has justified us he has made us righteous right then will come our sanctification that is our holiness and then salvation which is going to be made available when he returns but we need to accept him okay by faith not by our works and so we are trying to work to get him to look at us as if we are, as if we are more righteous, as if we are holier than thou, as if we have kept the law, as if we have kept the way, but we have transgressed the law just as well as the Gentiles have been in their paganism and their idolatry. So we can say that we are on the same playing field as the Gentiles for the simple fact that we have fell into their ways. Did we not worship Baal like we're doing still today? Have we not worshiped Molech, Shamash, Asherah, Ashtoreth, and all of the detestable gods that Yah has told us not? He has told us not to fall into, not to worship, not to bow down to. Have we not fell into the same idolatry? Yes, we have. So we cannot point the blame game on the Gentiles and those who have who have who have showed their willingness to come into the faith we cannot do that so therefore it is it is it is Yah's judgment that we do not trouble those who are turning to Yah from among the Gentiles 
We should not, we, 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 we should not do that. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 42, verses five through seven. This is what Elohim, Yah says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out. Did you hear that? This is what Elohim, Yah says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. Ah, Yah have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. Did you hear that? A light for the Gentiles to open eyes that are blind to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon who sit in darkness. Now we as the Israelites, we are to be the ones, especially us, because we received the law. We need to be a light for the Gentiles so that we can open eyes that are blind. Their eyes are blinded because they are still in other pagan religions. Their eyes are blind because they do not know the real name, the true name of our heavenly father and savior. Their eyes are blind because of the wickedness. I told you because of the paganism, the idolatry, their eyes are blind because they do not have the correct doctrine. They do not have the right they do not have the correct teachings. And so we need to be a light to open the eyes that are blind, but not only their physical eyes, we need to open their spiritual eyes. Their spiritual eyes need to be open. OK, but we need to free captives from prison. We need to free captives from this religious prison. OK, they are in a demonically charged state. Many of these Gentiles, many of these many of these pagan these pagan nations, these people have not received the knowledge and truth. And so we need to be the light for those who are willing to be grafted in. Right. So we need to open the eyes that are blind. OK, so that we can free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon who sit in darkness. Now, if you don't have the light, which is Yahusha Hamashiach, if we if, if 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 they don't have the light, then they are in darkness. They are under the spell of 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 satanic doctrine. They are under the spell of the pagan ways and the idolatry of this world. And they are still sitting under the demonic influence of Satan. So we need to be a light to those who are sitting in the dungeon of darkness. All right, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 15, 21 verses 28. Probably one of the most, probably one of the, one of the most taken out of context scriptures that there is. Let's go here. Leaving that place, Yahusha withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Yah, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Yahusha did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. See, that sounds just like something that the Israelites would do. They would, they would, they would say, get away. They would, they would send her, they would send people away for they keep crying after us, send them away. Now we're not supposed to be sending those away who are trying to get healed. We should not be sending those away who are trying to get the word. We should not be sending those away who are trying to obtain righteousness by believing what Yahusha has done. We should not be turning people away. So he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, this is what Yahushua is saying. All right. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, let's go. Let's keep going. The woman came and knelt before him. Yah, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Yah, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Yahusha said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted and her daughter was healed at that moment. Now, when Yahusha had told, had told this woman that he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, by law, he was correct in saying that. But he also understood that it is not now by tribe, it is by 
faith now that you can receive what is made available. This is the reason why he left sins unpunished. He left sins unpunished in his forbearance and his kindness because he came to deal with sin. He came to deal with sin, but he came to show his mercy. See, he came to demonstrate his love and to demonstrate his righteousness and to be made available for those who was willing to accept him no matter what nation you came from. This is what this was all about. This is the reason why, but he had to still let her know, look, I, I came, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. I, I'm going I'm to let you know that, but at the same time, though, your faith is what is going to heal you. See, this is this is what it was. So, no, he didn't turn anybody away. In fact, this is the reason why Paul was sent to the Gentiles so that salvation would be made available to the Gentiles so that we all could be so that we all could be uh, together in one accord in the spirit. I mean, now, again, you know. Our Hebrew Israelites, many of our brothers and sisters, I'm going to say all of us have lived like Gentiles. I mean, are we, again, are we not worshiping other gods of wood and stone, worshiping the cross, worshiping the cobblestone? I mean, come on now. I mean, we worship every god under, under the sun over here in the United States of America. I mean, we worship, we worship everything. We in Christianity, we in Islam, Judaism, Taoism, pantheism, Satanism, atheism. We in every single religion. We in witchcraft. I mean, I mean, who, who are we to try to turn away those who are willing to be grafted in by their believing? Who, who are we to do that? You see what I'm saying? So now this is the, re this is how we have the church fighting the church and we need to, we need to stop that. Now, let's go over here to Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 through 28. I mean, we got to deal with these Pharisees, too. We have to deal with the modern day synagogue of Satan. Here it is. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee. First clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. You Hebrew Israelites out there on the corner with the fringes, the tassels, the cape, the boots, and the tights, you understand? With the six-pointed reefing, which is not the star of David, but it is the star of Solomon, the star of witchcraft. You have it imprinted on your outfits. You wear the chains with the sunglasses. You hypocrites. You need to clean the inside of your cup. See, you got the outside clean, you have the talk and the lingo down, you have a little bit of Old Testament knowledge, but you're not dividing the word of truth. You see what I'm saying? You are leading people down the wrong road, you blind Pharisees. And that, and that star of witchcraft, that hexagon, that six-pointed star, it's a hex, meaning it's a spell. And, and that six-pointed star is the most potent means and forms of conjuring spirits. This is the reason why y'all still cussing. You're still trying to force women into polygamy, into a lifestyle that you can't even uphold, trying to fulfill your lustful desires in your flesh. You blind Pharisees, y'all are the synagogue of Satan. See, you clean the outside of your cup and dish. Yeah, you looking real nice on the outside with your, with your, with your nice garments, but, but inside you, you are, you are full of greed and self-indulgence. You indulge in yourself. You indulge in your pleasures. You greedy. You see, blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of your cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. First, you need to clean up your heart. You need to clean your spirit up. 
You need to, you need to, you need to get infused with love and righteousness. But see, you ain't righteous. Y'all ain't righteous because y'all still in the Old Testament. You still under the law where it was all about the works of your flesh. So this is what y'all engage in. You engage in your flesh. You need to come over and transition to the spirit so that you can get love, kindness, forbearance, that you can get self-control. Because right now you're out of control. So, hey, make sure the inside of your cup is clean and then the outside will be clean. See, this, this, is, this is what y'all need to see this. And again, you know, you, know you, you appear as righteous on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. You talk about keeping the law and, 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 and keeping the feast days, and you talk about loving, and I mean, you talk about all of this stuff, you know, m mainly keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and you don't keep it because guess what? Anyone who keeps the whole law yet stumbles at one point is guilty of breaking the whole law, and so you break the law just by not loving loving your neighbor, you've already broke the law every single time. And so that means that you broke all of the law, all 613, you broke them because you didn't keep the one law. So you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So we do have the modern day synagogue of Satan. Y'all ain't no different than the ones that are talked about in Revelation chapter two, verses nine. Why? Because you all are clean on the outside, but you're dirty on the inside. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, the church fighting the church. Revelation, let's go here to Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living Elohim. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of our servants of our Elohim. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Many of y'all Hebrew Israelites, this scripture is not talking about y'all. You are not the 144,000. Here we go. Verse five, from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. Okay, here we go. The great multitude in white robes. Verse 9. After this, I looked. After what? After the seal was put on the foreheads of the 144,000. After the 144,000 were sealed. Okay, after this, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from Every nation, every nation, that, that means the Gentile nations, y'all. Every nation, every tribe, that means every tribe, y'all. People and language standing before the throne and before the lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Verse 10, and they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our Elohim who sits on the throne and to the lamb. 11, all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped Elohim, saying, amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. 13, then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? Chapter uh, verses 14, I'm sorry. I answered, sir, you know, and he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. 
15, therefore they are before the throne of Elohim and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. 16, never again will they hunger, never, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. 17, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and Elohim will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now you must understand some about this scripture. These 144,000 were ones who did not defile themselves with, with women. And no lie was found in their mouths. Now, can you say that that's you? Can you say that you, that, that, that you are the 144,000 who did not defile themselves with women and, and have no lie found into their mouths? No, you cannot say that. You have lied. You have lied. So this 144,000 is not talking about all the Hebrew Israelites. Some of y'all are not. Some of y'all are not sure to make it. I'm trying to tell you because you have unforgiveness, you're unrepentant, and you still have a pagan mindset, and you think you know it all, and I'm saying you are causing the division amongst the assembly. And so I'm trying to tell you now, there are going to be Gentiles who you're going to look up and see, and they're going to be before you because you did not, you did not exude the love. You did not exude righteousness. Through what? Through faith. And so we and so and so this is going to be important to understand as we go forward so that don't nobody get get, you know, what I'm saying get above themselves and get beyond themselves to think that they are the ones who 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 are who are the promise. And no, nah, it's not guaranteed you. This is not guaranteed. I mean, if you you can still go to hell. For unbelief, you can still go to hell for unforgiveness. So don't sit here and think that that is going to be just all through the bloodline. It's going to be all because you come from the tribe. You see, because the 144,000, I'm trying to tell you, does not include you. You will be at the seat of judgment. And so this is where we need to understand that, you know, going forward, there should be no more church fighting the church. I mean, all nations will be blessed because of the faith of Abraham and his faith brought us all the way to the point where we could now receive salvation. And so now if you don't receive salvation and you still stuck up under the law, thinking that your righteousness and, and, and you're observing the law is going to get you into the kingdom. You're observing the law is going to get you looked at as if you holy. You are thinking wrong. You are thinking wrong. It is only by your faith. And then your faith will bring you justification and your sanctification and your salvation, which will be inside of you. But if you think that you can get what you're going to get from the kingdom of heaven, and by keeping the law and, and 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 through your righteousness of the law, oh yeah, you going you going you gonna miss this thing all the, all together. Now this is not promoting lawlessness because you are supposed to, uh, to to be perfect. You are supposed to keep the law. You are supposed to do that because my thing is is that when you when you keep the law, you're not just keeping the law by your own righteousness and works. You're keeping the law by Yahusha's righteousness on part imparted on the inside of you. Then you can do, but you can't do nothing apart from Him because He's already done. He's already done the work. He's already done the works of the law. Our job now is to become a light for the Gentiles and to continue to keep the assembly, to keep the church together. Not allow Satan to infiltrate the church because we want to be divided. We want to be, we want to be holier than thou. I mean, we want to point out people's sins and flaws, but then don't take that same measure, measurement of judgment on ourselves. No, that, 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 that right there is separation. You see, now all of us are not going to be together. All of us can't be together because we can't be with the ones who still want to worship Baal, Lucifer, and Molech. No, we can't be with them. But the ones who are like-spirited, like-minded in the spirit, in the one spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, we can be together. We need to be together, but we must not let the forces of the world separate us, you see what I'm saying, by, by, by you know what I'm saying, by, 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 you know, by who keeping the law and who, who, who says, who, who says that, you know, we're under grace and no, we under grace, but the law, 
and grace works in perfect cooperation with one another. And so we need to get those who are just only on the law and we need to get those who are just only about grace. We need to come together so that we can get this thing together so that we can rightly divide the word of truth. This is what we need to do. But we can't do that if we continue to allow our differences of opinion to separate us because at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with none of our opinions and emotions. This has something to do with his his word with Yah's word and it, and and then that's his word it's what's in his word and we need to rightly divide that so you guys that is it so we need to stop fighting the church father i come to you today father i say thank you for this message father father I ask this message does not fall upon deaf ears father father I ask that you continue to to work out the kinks, Father, work out the flaws within the body of Yahushua, Father, so that we could come together and stop the infighting one another, Father, so that we could come together and unify in one spirit, Father, and that we could worship you in spirit and in truth and in love, Father. Father, I say thank you, Father. It is in all of these blessings that I do ask in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, our personal Messiah and Savior, we pray. We most certainly give you the highest utmost praise, and we do gratefully say amen. You guys, that is it. I will be back at you all with another message very soon. I love you all. Bye-bye.